Hello there, you beautiful soul. Welcome back to another Culture Talks segment with your host and founder of Cultured Society. My name is Rebecca Munoz, and I am here with yet another special guest. And this just so happens to be my 42nd interview this year. And I'm really excited about this one. I'm obviously excited about every single interview and every person that comes through these doors because these conversations have been so needed, especially during the time that we're living in today. And if you have not had an opportunity to go through this collective conversation or collective conversations playlist, I really encourage you to do so because every single person that has come through these doors so far has so many nuggets of wisdom that you can use in your everyday life. And you don't necessarily have to adopt these philosophies as your own. But it really is so important to open up the dialogue, to open up these conversations so that we're able to embrace everyone, everyone's experiences, give room for people to share their stories, because we really need more people sharing their stories and their philosophies these days. Um, you know, in a time that we may be living in, or you might be experiencing chaos, there's also so much triumph going on in this world. And it's really important for us to continue to focus on that because remember where focus goes, energy flows. And we're going to be talking a lot about these energies that are coming through influx through this world or this planet today. So today, I'm so happy to introduce the beautiful Sharon Radigan. So Sharon was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. City life moved fast and did not allow her to be surrounded by nature. That fast-paced lifestyle stayed with her for many years. The healing power of nature was not something she fully understood at the time. She knew she loved beautiful things and how they made her feel, which led her to becoming a licensed cosmetologist. Making people feel beautiful and how it impacted their confidence was so powerful for her. A simple change created a shift, yet it still felt superficial. Moving to the suburbs began her love affair with nature. After experiencing a traumatizing life event, she instinctively started on a path that would lead to not only her own healing, but understanding more about the energy around us and moving through us. She started to move in the direction that made her feel good. From this point forward, she was inspired to spend more time in nature, along with choosing how and with who she would spend her time with. It was a positive energetic impact that was extremely powerful. The previous life events inspired her to becoming a certified feng shui practitioner, still making things beautiful, but with a bigger purpose. Her ultimate goal is to help people understand something they cannot see, teaching them to trust their intuition while tuning into their own voice. We give too much of our own power away, which can lead to living a life that does not feel purposeful. Understanding how to work with the energies and live in balance with them opens us up to so much more than the eye can see. And with this, I introduce the beautiful Sharon Radigan. Thank you so much for joining me today, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to do this with you. Thank you so much. You know, Sharon and I just so happened to meet through another platform, and we were introduced by a, uh, a gentleman that I actually interviewed back in February which I had never met in person. And I truly believe that technology can be used in a negative way as well as in a positive way. And I choose to use these technology platforms in a way to authentically connect with people. Even if we haven't met in person, Sharon and I had an opportunity to share space and exchange energy, not only on Clubhouse, but numerous times through, through Zoom. And we had such amazing conversations. It was as though I had known this woman for my entire life. <laughs> and it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to be able to connect with people, especially as you continue to become more aligned with yourself and your creator, the more that you are able to align with other souls that are in alignment with themselves and doing the work that they have been created to do. And this is so purpose-filled. This is a project that I was really inspired to do because there's not enough people in this, in this world tapped into their purpose. And we need more of that in order for us to be able to raise the vibration of the planet and for us to go into a new earth and a new way of living. 
So with this, I introduce the conversation on life philosophies, experiences, and culture. So Sharon, what is your life's philosophy? Yeah, and I love this question when I read it. Um, so it, it really is to stay curious and open, um, especially to what you believe in, right? And to you know, continue to grow and expand. You know, the assumption that we know everything we need to know often restricts us, closes us off to becoming more of who we're meant to be or recalibrating and course correcting. And when, so to stay open and curious is to, is to question things. And, and not in, in a suspicious way or a paranoia, but to, to just like, am I still on my path? Am I still in alignment? Do, do, is how I spend my day and what I fill it with, you know, all leading and in line with who I want to be as a person on this planet. So that, that has been um, my life philosophy that I really didn't adapt as, as a way of being until I found myself, you know, looking at everything and saying, none of this is really who I am. And none of this is the life that I want to be living, but I made all the choices. But when you make them from a limited or a fearful place or not really taking the time to question and vet things, you end up in places you don't want to be. It takes you down a lot of roads. So like pave your own road. And the way you do that is to stay open and curious all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that really brings us back to just being present, right? Being in the yeah. moment and allowing us to be guided by that higher power that usually speaks to us like every second of the day. Yeah. And, and, when you become really in tune with your own body and, and trust your intuition, your body is talking to you all the time, right? We feel the energy. People call it gut feeling because you have an instinctual feeling. And oftentimes, if somebody hasn't learned to trust and to really understand the power of that, you'll hear things like, I knew. Don't know why I did that. I knew it wasn't going to be whatever. So that's that we have this internal um, thing that's working for us all the time. But when you give all that away to Googling or asking people their opinions um, on a regular basis, you you are you are getting what their response or what their choice would be. And so you can get some feedback on things, but in the end, it, it has to be about, you can have 10 people tell you something's a good idea, but if your gut says it's not, trust your gut and not the 10 people because those 10 people have 10 different views and ways of being on this planet that are not yours. So that's, that's where you can, that, that's why trusting that is, is really powerful tool to develop. It's a muscle that needs to be strengthened because we are living in a time where everybody is either trying to get us to submit to their way of thinking or to, um, or for us to figure like there's so much going on, right? So our energy is just like ricocheting all over the place, right? Like, what do we believe? You know, what's the right thing to do? Uh, so when you stop and you just say, I know the answers to all of this. I know what I need from me. And you breathe through it. You get to just comfortably like recalibrate, bring yourself back to center and then move forward. And when that muscle is developed, then things are going on around you and you're, you're witnessing them, but you're not in them. You are not in the storm. You are not in the twister of it. So that's a really powerful place um, to be. Absolutely. You're so right. And it, <clears throat> well, I'm sure that your philosophy has evolved so much over the years, especially 
living in New York where you, I'm sure you can't even hear your own voice because it's so <laughs> loud and chaotic. So how has that philosophy evolved for you over the years? Uh, well, really, you know, kind of going back to some of what we were talking about, I can speak to it because I lived it, right? And I, and I found myself, right? So it, it was through trial and error. And it's the ego keeps you small and stuck and when you let it control things. Um, and when I belie believed I knew all I needed to know, um, it, life showed me otherwise. You know, life happened in a way that I went, oh, okay, well, that didn't go the way I thought it was going to. <laughs> and you find yourself going, wow. So finding out the hard way and realizing I didn't, I, I didn't know all that I thought I knew, it, it was painful. And so to say I surrendered, I surrendered to the understanding that not only is it okay that I don't know, but I don't want to think that I know everything because then I'm not open to a lot of beautiful, magnificent things that are like life is it's, you know, learning is lifelong. And, and I don't ever want to feel like, you know, when uh, I, I've had the term, um, people often will say feng shui master. And, and I don't like that term, right? That's why I call myself a practitioner. Because anything that feels like there's a completion right? And that I have reached something and there's no higher to go. Uh, I feel that's a limitation. And now because I don't put limitations on anything, um, I, I, that excites me because then I know that there's just always, who will I meet? What will they show me that I didn't know? And, and because I'm open I'm going to receive a lot more. I'm going to be brought to the people, places, and situations that are going to continue my evolution. And uh, that is more exciting than feel like I've reached something where I've, I've, I've completed something and there's no room to go anywhere else. So my, my evolving was a lot through uh, trial and error and learning things the hard way. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you said that, um, you know, we never really arrive to this place of complete mastery, although we can we can try to attain that, right? But it's a it's a never ending evolution of life mastery. We're always mastering something, and it's great. It's great to have that um, that way or that concept of living when you just know that as long as we're here on Earth, we will never stop learning. There's so much to learn. And yeah. even in, in your even in in your line of work right now, <clears throat> as you continue to um, to evolve as a person, you're going to continue to evolve as a practitioner, and you're going to get better and better and better. You're going to see things that you didn't see before. That's the beautiful part about curiosity, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and and it opens me up, right? Because what I'm finding with my work, the direction that I want to take it in, is to make it, to make it accessible, right? Because people to really have an, you know, uh, a true feng shui consultation, it's me coming in your house and it's me basically figuring everything out and then giving you what would be a report, right? To, to understand where the imbalances are and all of that. But what I'm finding is because there's this thought that there's some voodoo involved with it or that it's that's that it's mysterious it's just energy like electricity is energy right and nobody has this oh my gosh i'm going to turn the light switch on now oh you know it, they just it feels it's something tangible they can go to a switch they can hit it but it's energy and and that energy was collected right and then just directed and wired and all of, you know, solar powered. And feng shui is using that same energy, but understanding how it runs through our environment. So what I, what I feel like I want to do, and, and if I held on to this, well, this is feng shui and this is how it's done and this is how it's practiced. 
then I would never evolve in that. But my evolution now is to say, I want to now go out and have conversations, right? Hold lectures, um, have workshops where people come in and, and I make feng shui not feel like that, where it makes it feel so accessible, where there is no like, you know, like uh, nobody else can, like, people practice it intuitively already. But I feel like I just want to kind of remove this barrier or this thing of this is good feng shui, this is bad feng shui. That doesn't exist. There's There are things that are not ideal in feng shui, but nothing is ever good or bad. Because we, uh, we never, the thought with feng shui is never to make somebody feel like, oh my God, this is bad. My bed is on the wrong wall. Um, that that's that doesn't serve feng shui that's not what it's all about and so i want to remove all of that and that's an evolution of a practice from one way of doing it into another and had i not said okay well this is this is typically how it's done but that doesn't mean it's the only way it can be done and now it's opened me up to to seeing and thinking about how how i how i go about doing that so that's the beautiful part of leaving yourself open to the evolution of whatever it is that you do. Right. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And how would you say that your, your circle of influence has impacted the way that you think and live today? Yeah, I, this, I loved this question because I did a lot of my own um, in, in my journey to say, well, I'm going to move in the direction of what feels good, right? Like what makes me feel good. And so it was like, because the early years wasn't, weren't easy and there was a lot of struggle, it dictated so much. Um, and I carried all of that into my adult, young adult life. And I made a lot of decisions that I look back and I, I know now that they were made from a place of not knowing who I was and not um, carefully choosing um, or having like the goal. Okay, so the, these are my principles. This is what I believe, this is what I stand for. This is where I'd like to go in life. And now every decision you make goes through that filter, which leads you to pick the, the situations you put yourself in, the people you surround yourself with, uh, they're, if they're all in alignment, then a lot of the things that I went through, I know I wouldn't have went through. And, and at first I had a lot of anger around that, right? Like just like being mad at myself and judging myself and having a lot of, uh, you know, I was probably my own worst enemy. Nobody was, nobody could have judged me more than I was judging myself at the time. But with the with a point of catching myself and saying, okay, well, I can sit here and do this, right? It was intuitive, but I know I know that I was being guided, right? I was being shown things that were softening me and began me saying, I know that I'm better than this for myself. I know that I can do better. So how do I do that? You know, so let me go back and think about some of those things. And once I did that and I realized the mindset that I made those decisions with, right? And the things that I did, it was, of course, right? It's kind of that Maya Angelou, when you know better, you do better. So when you are, when you are making decisions with a limited mindset, without a really clear set of principles and goals, you know, you you wind up in exactly that. You, you're not living an authentic life and you're making decisions that were maybe to make other people happy or just not saying, okay, well, let me think about this decision. What, what does it look like long-term? And you know, when, you're in, um, when you make decisions impulsively without a lot of thought, you can't be surprised if you end up saying this was a really bad decision. And it, and it can look, some of those are life altering, right? Some of those are life altering. You can't go back, right? I always used to joke and say my kingdom for a time machine right? <laughs> to go back. But with the time and space, while I, I wish I could have avoided some things, I also say, 
you know, and I don't know who it was, but I read it somewhere where they, they did a study of people that suffered trauma and they asked them, if you could go back and undo all that trauma, would you, but you're not who you are today. And a lot of people, and when I read that question, myself included said, you know, that's a tough call because I know that it set me on a path that I don't know that I would have otherwise. So that's where you just kind of surrender and show yourself grace and know that um, life is about figuring things out. However, when you get really clear on your principles and you make choices that are in alignment, it's just going to be a lot smoother. And so those those potential mistakes or, or situations will not feel as epic. Right. Right. <clears throat> so when did that, when did that actually shift for you when you started to really be more conscientious of who you were spending your time with? Because I, I mean, our influences typically are the people that we tend to spend the most time with. So when did that start changing when you really started to pay attention to who you were spending the most time with and how they were impacting your energy? You know, at the time that I had that realization, it wasn't about the people I was spending my time with. It was about my life experience up until that point where I was alone with myself. Um, and I want to say that was in November of 2012, where it was, I was actually, <laughs> so, you know, I grew up Irish Catholic and no, the house could be burning inside. And if somebody knocked on the door, you'd open and they, is everything okay? Oh, everything's fine. We've got it all under control. And then you go in and uh, so that's, and, and so, and we're always fine. And we're always going to power through and we're, we're, you know, we're going to, my grandmother picked potatoes in the fields in Ireland, you know, like she was a strong woman, you know? And so I had been having these chest pains and thought, am I having a heart attack? I'm like, I am not going to the, right. I'm not going to the emergency room, right? All my years of medical school tell me that I'm not having a heart attack. I'm fine. And so I was up all night with this horrible pain in my chest, right? And feeling awful and waffling between, am I, am I not? I don't know, hospital? No, I'm not. And so I waited until like six o'clock in the morning and I called my sister and I said, you know, I'm having chest pains and I don't know what to do. And she's like, what do you mean you don't know what to do? Go to the hospital. And I, it's like, I needed somebody to not make me think I was being, I wasn't being strong enough to push through that. I wasn't exaggerating. So I wound up, I wound up in the hospital and it was like five o'clock or six o'clock in the morning on a cloudy November day. And the doctor came in and he's talking to me and they have me hooked up to everything. And he comes back in and, and, and he said, um, you know, can I ask you, is there any stress in your life right now? Because we're not finding anything. So I just started laughing and I went, you might say that you might, you might say that. And he said, all right, well, I mean, so everything looks good, but if, you know, we're going to do a couple of discharge things. And Rebecca, when he walked out of the room and I was in one of those emergency things where there's curtains, right? No solid door. So there's a whole nurse's station. There's people out there. I was so, it was so audible. I was so loud because I had this moment of all of the stuff, right? And now there's nothing wrong with me. So it, it, it really poked at this. I am being dramatic because there's nothing wrong with me. And I just went, I won't say the word, but it was, oh, F this, right? Like I went, this is, this is not how it's going down. Like this is not. <laughs> so when they discharged me and I was walking to my car on this, I mean, you can picture it just this dingy, cloudy. There were no leaves on the trees. Like everything about nature that I love was gone. So now I'm leaving. It's early. And, and as I walked to my car, I thought, girl, you need to figure this out because, because this isn't who you are, but somewhere you lost who you are. And that started the process for me. 
So it wasn't about anything other than feeling like where my life was and the things that had gone on that were really painful. I thought, I, I, I know, right, we all contribute something to those situations, right? And, and if you walk around saying all of this is being done to me, there's no room for growth. And I didn't want that. So I thought, okay, so this is where I am. I've chosen all of these people. I've chosen all of the characters to play these roles in my world. And now it's, so where did you contribute? And that was a really, really powerful exercise to go back at pivotal moments, but see the mindset I made the decision with. And I thought, oh, okay, so that's an area I need to work on. Okay, that's an area I need to work on. And then from there, it just all builds momentum because once you start you know, putting the light in the dark corners, all of a sudden, you know, like your chest expands, your shoulders go back, you're, you're more inspired as you greet the day. And you're like, well, I don't know what's happening, but I know I want more of that. And so you just continue to move in those directions, like wherever the pain is, move in that direction and, and really investigate it and see what was your contribution because that's where the growth is and that's where the learning is. Absolutely, yeah. And it's it's interesting because it seems as though that's really when we have our like our most um, enlightened epiphanies, right? When we're going through like these, these really radical experiences of experiencing pain and then it's like when the light switch turns on and you're just like, wait a minute, I have a little bit more control than I think I do. And I can totally shift this if I want to. But oftentimes we will stay in those cycles of pain, stress, fear, all these different emotions that keep us stagnant, right? When we have the ability to just move forward and even like <clears throat> kind of take a step back and even ask ourselves, okay, what was it? What, what line of events got me to this place that I can not necessarily reverse, but what can I learn from these experiences and then move forward and do it different? But we, we don't empower ourselves enough to do that. No. And, and, you know, there's a lot of judgment for people. <clears throat> well, and, and I'll say this, when you say, okay, I'm going to accept responsibility, that's not easy to do because now you're like, wow, I, I played a role in this. So I see the, I see why avoiding taking that position, like what did I contribute? I see where it's not a pleasant thing. And for some people, if they're gaining a lot of um, attention and support because they just can't pull it together for themselves, you know, that feels good, right? But we all want to be loved and nurtured. But the truth is the, the person who can love and nurture us the best is ourself. Yeah. Learning those self-soothing, um, those ways to self-soothe and those ways to, well, what do I need in this moment? Like, you know that better than anybody. So those external things are fine, but two things. They're not sustainable. Eventually people get very weary when they realize somebody is just not looking to move forward themselves. So if they're not looking to move forward, you can't expect people around you to still be there with you. They'll, they're, they're trying to get you over a hump. But if you're just kind of like, no, I'm going to dig my heels in and I'm going to stay on the other side of this hump, then, then they're going to grow weary. And now all you're doing is just confirming that people are doing things to you. You get more confirmation of what you already believe, which is, you know. So I think that when we take responsibility for, for where we played a role in the things about our lives that we're not happy with, you're given a sense of power. And power is going to elevate your energetic level in your body. And now you're, you're, you just become, well, I'll speak for me. I became so like a, like a, a sponge. 
it was I couldn't read enough. Uh, I couldn't listen to enough where it was all around positive psychology and rebuilding yourself and understanding choices. And, and to this day, I mean, I have a bookshelf here and, you know, that doesn't include audible. It doesn't include books from the library. I don't even know how many books I've read since 2012 and they've evolved over the years, right? As I feel like I've healed and grown in areas. Now it's about just understanding our, just understanding mindset. So I read, really, I read, it's all nonfiction and it's all about positive psychology and thinking and choices. And so it, it just was fueling me and becoming certified with feng shui and understanding energy. Now I know what it was. It was, I'm removing energetic blocks from within my body, the chakra system, all that you want to call it. I was opening and expanding. And with that opening and expanding, you are receiving. And now when you're when you spend your time saying, okay, this is where I'm going, you are now meeting different people, more, people that are more in alignment. And then you find yourself in situations. So everything starts, there's a synchronicity to life where you're like, you're the third person that mentioned that book to me. And in my world, that's, well, that's just the universe telling me that's a book you have to read. Or, you know, I don't really feel like going, but something's telling me I need to go. And then that's when you make a, a connection with somebody. So energetically, I understood more about my body and what I was doing. I was intuitively healing myself from the inside out. And that that's a really powerful thing to do for yourself. And, and so the, you know, don't, don't, attach so much to feeling judged if somebody says, you know, your, your victim mentality, T you know, witness what they're saying and leave a little room to say, is that true? Do, do, do I feel like everything was done to me? Can I not find any way that I may have contributed to it? Because if you can do that, if you can, instead of being defensive, if you can just soften and say, I know these people love me. So they're, but they're pointing something out to me and I want to pay attention because I don't want to keep feeling like this. So the only way to do that is to, 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 to really like pay attention to what's going on in your body and not have all this defensiveness around somebody bringing up to you that, uh, that you may, you know, you may need to pull it together and try a little harder in a loving way. I mean, if it's all done with love. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Your bio had mentioned that you help people basically trust their intuition and listen to their own voice. And so that goes into my next question of, do you believe that your line of work infects our society with positivity? You know, if I may be so bold, there's no question. And I think, I think understanding our energetic bodies, right? Our intuition, our moods, all of that um, is, it speaks to everything I've been, I've been talking about, right? Because when you start making a choice or doing something that you feel energetically is, this doesn't feel right, and you question it, then you're gonna not go or not do or not be a part of, and, and you, you find yourself not in the places that you don't want to be in because you've really tuned into how you feel about it and you question it. So, I mean, with the, with the, with feng shui in, in for the home, you know, I think that work is just as powerful because it, this is where we live or in our office space, right? It's feng shui is in any place that you spend any amount of time in. You know, if you go into a place that's not energetically balanced, it may not bother you to go spend an hour there. But if you live there and there's a real imbalance, it will eventually um, wear at your energy, right? It, it's like water going through rocks where you'll see, they'll go back 20 years and they'll see that the water has just worn its way through a rock and created this space. So that is like the energy around us. And so, you know, whether you live with other people or you live by yourself, 
you know, you're either connecting with the people you live with or you go home and you reconnect to yourself. And so if that's neglected um, and if it's not shown the love that it that it needs to right, like cleaning and organizing your space, you know, you're showing love and you're allowing the chi energy to flow. Um, then it's going to be reflected back to you where, you know, somebody that stands in a room full of clutter is going to have a lot of opinions about the condition of the space, about their inability or their lack of uh, motivation to do anything about it. So it's not, you know, there's not a loving situation going on in, in an environment like that, or when you don't understand that you should be surrounding yourself with things that really bring you joy. And that really, you know, it's when everybody, I hear people joke around about the Marie Kondo spark joy um, comment, right? Like hold it and does it spark joy? But she was brilliant because she distilled it down into just those few words because that's exactly what it is. If you're holding something and you're not like, I love this, I love having it, I, it's something that feels really good to have around me, then it does need to go. If you're holding it and you have all these other conversations, then that's the energy it's holding in your space. So I feel that the work that I do is, is really important because I am helping people to understand the importance of their environment and create environments that when they come home, you know, I, I use this to people, you know, I, I have this way that I put it to people is that if you come in at the end of the day, you should kind of walk through the threshold and feel like oh, I'm home. Like it feels so good to be home. But if you walk through the door, and you're like, you know, oh my gosh, now I have to go cook dinner and I didn't do this and I didn't get that. Then there's an imbalance in the home. And yeah. now everybody in that house is, everybody in the house is being impacted by it. So if there's a real imbalance, then now you come in the door and you're like, I have to do all these things. And then somebody comes to you and says, well, I don't want to have to run to the store. I can work all day too. And it's like, well, you know, we need this. So that's how it, plays out in the environment. So if that's how it happens and everybody goes to bed in this agitated state, you know, how restful is the sleep? And now you're going out into the world again. So there are people that are in this, this cycle of that, where it's almost like they forget there's another way to be in this world and to come into your family, your husband, your wife, your children, and know that this is where you you kind of come to connect with each other. And how was your day? And yeah, no worries. Let's order takeout. Nobody has to go to the store. Let's just order takeout and, and keep it really easy. And now instead of that, like all that energy, all that negativity gets sucked out. You're ordering takeout. And now you're sitting around the table having a really nice dinner instead of staying in that cycle. So it's really understanding what, when I put it to people like that, they instantly can tap in or have a memory or know what their experience of their home is and say, and I've had people say, oh my gosh, like <laughs> this is making so much sense. And when I see that happen and I know that we're about to go on a journey and we're going to shift all of that for them, that's, that's, it feels powerful, but I feel like I'm just a facilitator of a beautiful practice that was discovered for exactly that, so that we are living in a state of balance that allows us to be better humans, better partners, better mothers, fathers, teachers, workers. You know, we're just we're just more of ourselves because we have more balance in our house. We have our place to really recalibrate and connect to who we are as people. Yes. That, and that's so important. Not just, <clears throat> I teach the, the holistic way of living. So <clears throat> if you're not familiar with the term holistic, holistic means that we are a mind and body and spiritual connection, which impacts not only what happens within our environment, within our body, 
but also it impacts everything externally. And so it's really important for us to be very um, practical, but also very mindful about what our environment, the energy in our environment is doing to our energy internally. And it, it's all divinely connected. So all divinely connected. Yeah. And, and you know, so, you know, in, in short, just to give a little um, background um, for anybody that's not familiar with feng shui or the Bagua map, which I practice form school, we use a Bagua map that we apply to the house. And, and it's basically, you know, nine squares that get placed on the floor plan. And so I know you and I have talked about this, but just so people can understand when I say the balance and the energies to really put names to it where it's, they can attach it to every area of their life. So those nine areas consist of career, knowledge and self-cultivation, health and family, wealth and prosperity, fame and reputation, love and marriage, creativity and children, knowledge and self-cultivation. And then in the center, there's not a specific energy, but it's center. So it's exactly what it would be. It's the core of, of your home, right? It's just the, the center point, which is the grounding of the whole environment. So when there's imbalances in, you know, when all the energy and focus is on wealth and prosperity, and then there's no balance in health and family, then it could translate into there could there could be no financial issue in that household at all right it could be like financially they got it all covered but if they're neglecting the health and relationship or there's an imbalance in that area of the, ha of the house at some point it's going to catch up because it's not sustainable and so you may have all this money but you know what if like the most unfortunate thing happened is the person who was earning all that money from all the stress and all the work and not living, leaving time for health and family has a health crisis. Like all of a sudden you're like, you know what? Money is not everything. So when you understand that all of those energies are being held in your home. So if you have a room that's holding, that's why removing clutter is, is really a hot topic for a lot of people because just removing clutter from your house will allow chi energy to flow through. But it also, when I mention all of those areas, is there any area that you look at and say, no, it's not important enough? Like even if you picked creativity in children, which most people associate with uh, literally children, right? But that's not true. It's where is your childlike spirit in life? Like, where are you childlike? Where do you allow for yourself to have a way that you express yourself and tap into that, that wonderment, right? And, and for creativity, it's, you know, maybe you always wanted to write a book and you've just somehow life has made you feel insecure and that you're not a writer. And now you're working in an office nine to five, but like that's this burning desire that's always back there. Well, when you make sure that that area is loved and nourished with the things and, and that hold that energy, then, then maybe like you can work that nine to five, but when you come home, you put a schedule together and you say, I'm going to write a paragraph a night and I don't know where it's going to lead but, but I'm going to remember the dream I had as a young person where I imagined myself as an author. So, you know, even to pick that area that most people would say, I don't even know, all right, so my children, I don't have children. So how does that area apply to me? They all apply to everybody and everybody in the house is going to benefit from the energy being impacted because nobody would sacrifice their love and relationships, nobody would sacrifice knowledge and growing as a person, you know, traveling in the world or traveling, you know, you know, helpful people in travel could, could translate to literal travel, but it could also translate to where do you want to take your life? Where do you want to, what do you want to elevate to, you know, is it getting promoted in a job? Is it moving from one level of expertise to another? And the helpful people part is, well, who do you meet? What are the connections that you make that help to forward all of these things? Like somebody that would come along and say, oh, you're looking to become a chef. I have a friend who's got, and they would love to have you come and help out on the weekends and see if you think you'd like to do that. So when you put that definition on all of those areas, 
all of a sudden people are like, oh man, it all matters. And when every area is shown the consideration, which is just keeping your house in order and understand, and there's a lot more information about, because you can have too much of things, like your house can be neat and clean, but if you have too much of a, of a particular element, it's holding a, holding a certain amount of that energy, right? But just knowing that all of those energies are living in your house and in your workplace with you, you start to look at your environment very differently and, and say, I want to show love to all of those areas. And when you do that, that's the balance that's created. Yes. Yes, it's so true. And we don't oftentimes think about how all of those areas of our life impact another and another. It's like a domino effect. So if we don't have balance in one area of our life, there's going to be imbalance in other areas of our life. And it's a it's a practice that takes time to, um, I mean, for you to really be able to master. And even then, we don't really master it because things are constantly changing. And that's the only constant in life is change. And it's just be, becoming more adaptable to it and recognizing that, you know, every day is going to be different. And the best that we can do is just to practice the, that balance, having more balance. And it's great to be able to have people like you because it's a very unique practice. Feng Shui is not something that a lot of people talk about, that a lot of people don't know about. So it's really great that you're doing this work because it's much needed. It is definitely needed in this time that we're going into right now. So how would you say that you stay relevant, unique, and true to who you are as a person? Oh, relevant, unique, and true to who you are. You know, staying open and curious. And everything will always come back to that for me because to stay relevant or to, you know, to evolve or continue to evolve, if, if I stay open and curious and there's a, there's a direction that I am being divinely led to, then I will, then I will always, that will all take care of itself. It's what it's, if I were to make these declarations of, nope, this is it. This is, this is what I'm meant to do. Uh, you know, one of the, um, I'm actually in the middle of a, a certification now to become a life coach. And I'm not a big fan of the term life coach, but, but that's what the title is called. And could I, could I have told myself, oh, I don't need to become a life coach. I'm using this intuitive practice and uh, I'm a feng shui practitioner. Like that's who I am and that's what I do. And I don't need to now go out and get another certification. But I had a moment and I, you and I have talked about this before where I, I recognize that I am dealing with energetic bodies that are living in these homes. So if you are, if you can't find a way to energetically balance yourself, not that you won't benefit and have some, um, reap some rewards from getting your home into balance, but it's, it's like anything else, you know, your, your energy is mixing with the energy of the space that you're in. And so there are times when I can recognize that there somebody's really going through something and, and they and they want to feng shui their house because there is a, a, you know, a misguided belief that if, if that house is brought into balance, all of those things go away. It won't go away. If the imbalance is truly just the home, then yes, the, you will you will see you will see the changes no question but if the if there's something really significant for the person an energetic belief or thought about life or themselves that is just so ingrained in who they are right and i'll use the term victim then you know, they're going to find a reason to feel like that didn't even work for them. You see, this is so bad that even I had feng shui done and nothing happened. And so, you know, there, there are two ways that I look at that, right? First of all, I, I won't work with somebody that is almost like, well, just come in and fix my house because we're not an energetic match. 
and and I don't want to hold judgment about the person. I'm just respectfully know I I respectfully let them know that I I don't think we're an energetic match because I I am really proud of this work and it is sacred and I don't want to dilute that work by taking work that I know is not being received and appreciated and they will not benefit. And so what do I do to the work when they go out and talk about it, that they've had the work done and they're not seeing it, nothing good is happening. And I know that it's not about that. It's your connection to your space. So I feel with this certification, it's really learning and understanding, which has been a lot of fun, how you speak to people. Um, and some of it, I feel like I al already intuitively was doing, but there again, I, I left room to say, but maybe I'm not doing it as well as I could be doing it. And I'm so glad that I did that because I can certainly see all the ways that I can improve on my conversations with them. And the, and, and I'm, and I'm, it's only a couple of weeks in and it's, it's pretty extensive. It's going to go for like seven months. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an intense one, but I wanted to pick one that was, you know, it, it was expensive and it was a commitment, a real commitment of time, like months so that it wasn't something where it was this quick run through and I get a certificate, but this is where you have to really prove, earn, coach people, submit stuff. They have to say, yes, you, we feel that you have understood and, and took this practice out there and, and facilitated it in a way that we are going to say, yes, you are now in our opinion from our school certified. I don't know that I, I don't know that if I stayed shut and, and, closed off to who I am and what I call a, being a feng shui practitioner that I would have ever thought to go down that path. And I, and I think that would have been a disservice to this work. I'm seeing how this is another layer that's going to grow and expand for me to be able to do it even better than, than before. Right. So you've just adopted that I'm a never ending student and there is not enough for me to know. <laughs> not enough for me to know. And, yeah. and, and to just say, I really want to start reaching people where it's not just me going out to their home and doing a consultation. I want to gather people. I love to gather people. I love speaking. You know, I had a, a friend of mine, we were talking and I just said, you know, I, I'd much rather work with masses of people, right? Because that's, that's how something, a shift spreads even faster, like more people getting more knowledge that's just going to touch their lives and cause that ripple effect. And so I said to her, you know, like I, when I think about what I envision for it, it it's having like a lot of people in one space and there's a camaraderie and there's an energetic level where everybody is so excited about what they're learning and they're sharing it with each other. And now it's this collaboration and I'm just facilitating it. But now all those people go out with that high vibrating energy and they are rippling out into the world. And my friend was like, you're nuts. <laughs> she said, I, you, to put me, to talk in front of a room full of people, that to her, that's her worst fear. For me, that's where I'm most comfortable. So I, I know that the life coaching is also going to help me be a better facilitator working with individual people and in how to create modules and have them really um, integrate and be part of a, of a, of a workshop. That's, my, that's an evolution that if I don't stay open, I don't know that I'd be heading down this path. Yes, absolutely. And, it, and that's the thing is that we never really know where our life is going to take us because right now we have a vision of what it's going to look like, but it usually never really unfolds that way. So it's always great to just stay open, curious and adaptable to everything that's happening. And when we have, you know, certifications that like that, and when we know that, that ultimately we just want to help people. That's usually when the magic unfolds um, so beautifully. So beautifully. That's it. 
And, you know, I think, too, uh, something that's really been on my mind, I have older children, right? They're 20, soon to be 23 and 21. Um, but when I'm, when I'm listening to a lot of the adults about the state of the world, the pandemic, where they think the world is heading, um, you know, we, we were on this planet longer than our kids and we're, we're experiencing something that is rocking us a little more because we lived without any of this. And now all of a sudden, you know, we're like, nothing makes sense. Everything's crazy. Nobody's behaving. We've never experienced this before. And so I'm finding that there's a lot of adults talking in really constricting, limiting ways around young adults. And I've had to sit my kids down and say to them, there are a lot of people that are, that you're, you know, you grow up thinking that adults have the wisdom and we do, we do have wisdom. But I also think that because a lot of people are operating in this low vibration, they're focusing on what's wrong and then having conversations in front of their kids or talking maybe to their kids about what the future could be. And a lot of kids are thinking, well, everybody's talking about how there's, you know, there are no jobs when we get a school and the economy is this and all of that. And, and I feel like our, those, this young generation is feeling like, well, what's the point of us doing all of this when all these people that are older than us and on this planet are, you know, talking about doom and gloom? Like, how do you stay hopeful and want to have a future? And so me sitting with my kids alone and saying to them, don't worry about what you're hearing right now, right? We have survived things worse than this in the past and we've always evolved and moved forward and that will be no different for now but you need to tune out people that you may love and respect for your own self mental health you know your physical health where you're not carrying all their stories because you think they know something that you don't know and now you're making limited, having limited beliefs based on that. So part of, for me too, is to want to have this conversation about understanding the power of the words we choose, the energy of our space, just understanding the power of energy, right? But it's unseen, it's not tangible. So if I can, if I can work in these groups where I, I gather people in large groups and maybe I work from the top down so that maybe those parents go back out into the world and now they come to their children with a perspective that is more elevated, you know, because they're vibrating at a higher space. That's going to, that's going to translate to this whole younger generation that's trying to figure out what future looks like for them, you know, and that's how we now affect a younger generation. Cause I, I don't want all of this, this whole younger generation starting out life in their 20s at this low vibrating frequency. Like how will there be evolution and growth? And like, so let's reattach to the wonder and know that we are gonna be okay. And whatever this looks like doesn't mean you can't still have hope and plan for a future. And so I, that's what I feel part of my work is too, to just, kind of get maybe people to uh, stop um, attaching so much to these low vibrating stories that are, that are only not allowing them maybe to be as fully present for the younger people in their life. That's, that's really important for me right now. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's really great that you're, that you're facilitating that work because if you really think about it, historically, these catastrophes have been happening since the beginning of time. It's biblical, right? The only thing that has changed is the fact that social media and technology is so prominent in our lives now. We spend more time on our phones and in front of a computer 
than we ever have before in front of TVs. We watch bad news, right? Like, and media outlets, that's how they make money. They make money putting out bad news. And so when you, when you go out into your own personal world, you realize that it's really your perception that creates your reality. You can choose to look at all the bad things that are happening in the world, or you can choose to look at the great things that are happening in the world. And you can, you can up-level yourself by focusing more so on the good things than on the bad things. And we know we live in a duality filled world. We are, we're filled with contrast. We're going to, we are going to experience light and darkness. It's a never ending thing, but where are you putting your focus? That's it. That's it. And, and I know that when I had that conversation with my kids, you know, I felt like they might've been half listening, right? Like most with, you know, your teenagers and you know, but I, I had a conversation with my son last night and, and he had this kind of doom and gloom approach to something. So I said, well, can we reframe what you just said? And I reframed it in a way where it was still the same thing, but I reframed it using language that wasn't so constricting. And, and I said, whatever you think about all of this, you have to admit that you understand the different energy level you feel by saying it this way and then now saying it in this reframed way that removes all of that harsh, constrictive language. Mm. And he, you know, to his credit, he said, I do, I do, but, and I'm like, okay, but when you put the word but in there, I'm just saying that there has to be a part of you that's attached to wanting to feel badly. So if your goal is to feel badly, then no, there probably isn't much I can say. But if you say, you know what? Leave some room to question that. You know what, that's right. Do I wanna feel bad? Because that's all that brings. But if I say the same thing and I reframe it in another way, now it's like, okay, so this is what it is, but, but I can, I can handle it if that's how I word it and that's how I say it. And that's the energy I attach to it. So I just said, you know, bigger than the, than what we're talking about, it's how do you want to feel about it? Because if you want to feel bad, then, then keep using that language. But if you want to feel hopeful and actually move in the direction that you're saying, then, then use that language. So all I'd ask for you tonight is to sit with that. And you don't even have to get back to me. Like I'm just, I'm just making you aware of something, but you're going to ultimately be the one that has to decide what, what, where you want to resonate. Do you want to resonate in that doom or do you want to resonate in its action that needs to be taken? And if I look at it that way, hmm, not that bad, you know? So it's a process but I think if, if you're consistent enough and you lead by example, especially like I'm speaking about, you know, operating in a high vibration when you have children and when you're energetically in balance yourself, then you're, you're not like for me, I don't, e I don't even get frustrated about being a parent anymore through all of this because, you know, my kids are not at the age where you say to them, no, we're not going to watch that. We're going to turn the TV off or um, phones have to stay downstairs when you go up to bed, which is how I was. Right. And you, you know, no, we're not watching R rated movies. Like they had to wait until they were 18, you know, so, but I can't do any of that anymore. So they can go off and expose themselves to whatever they want to. So now where I am is I am here for counsel. So all I can do is reflect back to them um, and, and make them question. Be, nobody wants to be told what to do. And certainly young adult, you know, like I said, teenagers, but they're not. For me, they're young adults and they're not looking for me to tell them what to do. And the truth of the matter is, I don't feel like that's what I have to do anymore. I, I know my role has shifted, but because I am in an energetic balance with myself, then I can be in a situation of trying to still parent kids that are, I call it the, you know, there's always uh, for certain things, there's a space where it's no longer, but not yet. 
right? So they're no longer teenagers or infants that I have to manage their life and make sure they're, they, you know, they don't eat lead paint and they don't get too close to the edge of the cliff, but they're not out on their own, you know, as adults. So it's no longer, but not yet. And I'm in this weird little space of still having to be engaged, but, but I made the decision to, to create the separation and say to them, I'm here for counsel. And that energy for them is a lot better because now they, they can come to me and I'm not looking to tell them what to do, but, but I will make them question what I hear when it's around a limiting belief or constricting language. Right. And, th- and that's, and that's where I think it's powerful. That's the power of, of really being tuned into yourself. Right. Right. No. And it, I always reflect on this, um, on this biblical scripture that says life and death is in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And we don't realize how much our words and our thoughts impact how we feel every single second of the day. It impacts our energy. It impacts the way that we feel about ourselves. Um, you know, it, it impacts the way that other people feel about us or how they feel about themselves. So it's um, it's really powerful when we are able to recognize how our the words that we're speaking, the words that we're thinking, the conversations that we're having, how that's impacting our energy on a consistent basis. And it's great. I mean, we we definitely everybody needs guidance. Uh, everybody needs counsel. It's really important for us to have that person that we can fully confide in um, to create a safe space for us to be able to talk about these things. Because, you know, when we internalize these emotions that we feel, it really can also be very detrimental to our well being. And it's really important for us to have a safe space to talk about these things. Absolutely. And, and a safe, and, and to, you know, when, when you have the hurtful words coming at you, right, where you, like, I could go out and I could be in great energetic balance and I might come across somebody who is maybe having a bad day and they're just not nice and they, you know, whatever, you know, you, you drive and whatever, somebody either gives you the finger or whatever, you find yourself in this position where you're you're kind of going about your day you're elevating at a high a high vibe and then all of a sudden you know you encounter it could be somebody you know who who just is not doing well that day and maybe they they come at you in a way that's like mm, that's not okay but when you know it it's uh it it's just saying well i i, I can choose to respond any way i want to this and and um I don't want to engage in it. And that's a powerful place to be in because you're, you're still, now you're really in control of your environment. So whether it's us speaking the words or the words being spoken to us, you know, to, to just say, like, if it's you speaking, what are my intentions? What are my intentions when I say this? Because, you know, sometimes if you question that, you're like, hmm my intention is to make somebody feel a little guilty about something. So I don't want to do that. Now you, you choose words a lot more wisely, but also too, like when somebody, when somebody comes at you and understanding where is your energy level? Like, do you want to, do you want to drop down to meet that energy level? Or do you just want to stay here and meet them where they are and be like, you know what? it seems like you're having a really bad day and I just hope your day gets better. But like we we're, we can't have this conversation now, or I'm not going to respond to you right now. I'm going to, I'm going to just give you the space that you need because you're, you're because people can't receive what you're saying to them when they're in that low vibrating state anyway. So with, you know, the media, and all that gets said and everything, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of anger. And even if you're not physically in somebody's presence, if you're watching somebody screaming and yelling um, on a video, you're, you're receiving that energy. Your body is being affected by what you're seeing. And, and your brain is almost like, oh, 
fight or flight, we're in a bad situation. There's a lot of, so when you start realizing that, then you say, well, I'm not even going to watch anything like that. And I don't, you know, I've had friends that will say, this was so horrible. I'm going to send you the link. And I'm like, please don't, you know, I, I don't want the link. I want to stay where I am. I'm, I understand, especially growing up in Brooklyn, you know, the school that I went to, you had to go to, to the bathroom with a buddy. You couldn't even go by yourself because you could get jumped in the stairwell. <laughs> so I understand what's out there. Like I understand that world and I understand what it did to my energetic body. And so now I am the gatekeeper and I am very aware. So when a friend tells me, starts off with, she read a horrible story and she wants to send me the link so I can read it. I'm, you know, no, thank you. No, thank you. And, and I do that because the more I do that, then the less she wants to send that. Like now she knows right now, now she just, you know, she likes, she doesn't like it, but she's caught up where she feels like, it's reconfirming her thought that this world is going to hell in a handbasket, right? <laughs> and so I've told her, I, I understand that, but I can't look at it from that way. So, you know, having that boundary of what I'm allowing in, I am the gatekeeper for it all, what's coming in and what's going out. And recognizing that, helping other people to recognize it in themselves, you are just so much more prepared for whatever the next thing that may come. You're, you're braced and ready. Like your knees are always at a slight bend because you, you have prepared yourself energetically to be the gatekeeper. Yes. Yes. And we have to be that for ourselves. You know, we have to be that for ourselves and we don't have to accept everything that's told to us. We don't have to accept everything that we watch. Um, a lot of it is an illusion. Um, there's a lot of it that's true, but at the same time, we don't necessarily have to live in that space. And it's, it's constant choices that we're making every single day to shift our mindset, to shift our perception of what's really happening. And even when things are not going our way or things are not good per se, we can shift our perspective and ask ourselves, what is it that I need to learn from this? Why is it that it's making me feel this way? Can I think of it in a different, you know, perspective and get something good out of this? I mean, it, everything is a choice. You know, that's such an important point that you bring up because this is not to say that I or any of us don't have that day where it's just like, we are in a funk, and, yeah. but that's okay, right? It's not about, um, you know, walking around saying everything is just, you know, we are living in a world of rainbows and there is just, it's not, it's not about that at all. It's trying to stay in, in an elevated state as much as possible, but there may be a day where you're just, it's okay to surrender to saying, I am not, um, I am not <laughs> ready for a public consumption. Sure. So I am just going to, and I, and I've done it often where I say, this is a day that I'm just going to surrender. I'm not going to tell myself a lot of stories. I'm just going to, I'm just witnessing that there's something for me energetically that's just not connected today. And so rather than me trying to push through and go out into the world with it, I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to go for a hike. And I'm just going to put myself out with nature and know that it's okay. I'm feeling like this. I'm going to give myself the day and then see where I am. And then anything that's prolonged requires that, that put it, putting it through the, the questioning and evaluating it. But it's okay to have a day where you're just, you're not fully there, like surrender to it and show yourself the grace. And, you know, is that a day to maybe binge watch a show that you love? You know, I do think those days are valuable. It's just when you're doing them consistently and it's about avoidance, you know, that's, that's when it, 
needs to be addressed and maybe questioned. But it's an important point to make that um, that we're always we're I think we're always all trying to do the best we can, but really understanding how do we energetically um, show up and be 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 in relationship with not only the people in our lives. But when we go out, you know, do you, do you take a minute to engage somebody at a store? Something happened um, where I was returning a shopping cart and it was an older gentleman out there and I'm here in Florida and it's hot, you know, and he's out there and he's collecting shopping carts. And I walked up and he said, oh, you can, you can give that to me. And I said, no worries. And I, I said, are you having a good day? And he goes, I'm hot. And I said, well, I said, kudos to you. You must have something in you to choose to be out here doing this. He goes, it's okay. It's my, we wound up having this lovely conversation. And I like to do that because I like meeting people. So when I'm out in the world, I know like for him, I know how I felt walking away from it. It was a really fun conversation. We were laughing, we were talking. He was talking about, you know, you know, people who take shopping carts to like the next shopping center. <laughs> He's got to get them and how he, you know, it's not a big deal. It's what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. He didn't have a lot of stories around it. So I got to meet this man. We had this great conversation he probably felt like that was fun. And I was like, that was fun. And so that's how I want to greet the world. And I know that it's all because I have a balanced environment physically and environmentally. And that's what I take out into the world. And my intention when I go out is to, to just kind of be in the moment and be present with people. And from there, that's when magic happens. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. 100%. And I, I'm with you. I love to do that. Every time that I'm out, it doesn't, it doesn't fail. I always end up meeting somebody that I've never met before, um, end up ha sparking up a conversation with a complete stranger. It ends up being super magical. And that's, that's what happens when you're in flow, when you allow yourself to be in the moment, you don't really allow fears to infiltrate your energy. You just recognize that everybody is a part of you <laughs> one way or another, right? Absolutely. right? Light attracts light, you know, like he's out there doing his thing and and for some reason, you know, we, we got in that conversation, but, but I feel like it's because you, you, when you're an energetic match, you're just drawn to those situations or people that are, are resonating with you. And, and that's when opportunity comes too, right? Like I met somebody last night, it, it's turning into a whole thing you know, with me, with feng shui, with this event she's doing, and it was a random meeting, but it's not random, you know, when you are aware of these things and, and, uh, and, and we just started talking, but instantly there was an energetic match. I felt it, she felt it. And then we were, we were talking for like two hours about all kinds of things and so excited to have met one another. If you don't, if you're not leaving and if you don't, if you don't make it your intention to kind of go out into the world and, and hold that, like, recalibrate, check in with yourself and want to, to elevate. Would I have even been aware of that woman? Would we have even started speaking? Probably not. Right. If I was in a, if I was in a mood that really was, you know, not, a, I'll say not, not a good mood. Right. But it's low vibrating. That's what it is. So then it's kind of like you go there and you sit and you're just like, uh, you know, this thing and and now this woman is right here. But now I'm like, I'm at this thing. This is great. And I'm looking around. I'm taking people in the majesty of the view that I had. And this is amazing. And then she and I started talking and it leads to that. But when you when you're elevating at that high frequency, opportunities and situations and people that are going to be part of that evolution for you or, you know, a way for you to a direction for you to go in are going to show up. It's, it's, you know, it's the, it's just attracting to you because you're open 
you're expansive instead of, you know, being like this and having a lot of stories, you show up like this and then you are like, this is, you know, it's almost like this is the receiving, right? When you're like this, like, this is beautiful. I love this instead of, I don't want to be here. I don't want to, you know? (laughs) It's very true. You become like a magnet and, you know, being very open to the idea that, Um, we are all divinely connected one way or another and we may look different but we all have very similar components that make up our human anatomy and at the end of the day we really all want the same thing we want to be able to authentically connect and sometimes it has to be you it has to be you to be the one to take that forward motion and actually like speak right? Take, take action and act and speak because a lot of people are, are operating off of fear. Um, they're scared to go up and talk to strangers that I, you know, last year I took on a project where I went door knocking to go introduce people to my brand. And it was during like the, the height of the pandemic, right? Where everybody was scared to leave their homes. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to take advantage of this and I'm going to go and (laughs) knock on people's door. And people were so receptive to it. I had a few people here and there that were kind of rude, but for the most part, people were so open to it. And it took me taking action and 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 recognizing that, you know what, I'm sure that that there's more people that want to authentically connect like I do than people that that, that don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. And, you know, you, you end up having a lot more beautiful experiences when you allow yourself to be open like that than when you don't. Absolutely. And, and you're right. We, we all do want the same thing. We all do want the same thing. And if you go even deeper with it, which I believe there is no separation. We are all connected. And I think, so those couple of rude people that you come across, it's that thing of leaving a little room. I can, I can have a lot of judgment or I can just say, this person is just, you know, what there's something they're going through. And, I, and, and depending upon what the situation is, what the relationship is, right? A door-to-door situation. It's just kind of like, no worries, my apologies have a great day and you just remove yourself. But even as you're walking away to say, I'm just, you know, I just send that person a lot of love and light that whatever, whatever's going on for them, that it kind of moves through them quickly and there and you restore their balance. That just helps you to show up even for, for people that are a certain way. Again, it's that not, not uh, we, we can choose to respond any way we want. Right. But I think when we are just kind of in that, mode of love no matter what um they're going to receive that they're going to receive that in some way shape or form so you know you take an experience that you could walk away I can't believe how rude they were and they could have been nicer but you don't you just kind of like you just let it just kind of slide off because you recognize it's not personal it's not personal and you're doing whatever it is that you need to do in order for you to continue to move forward to just um just recognize that every every experience that people are having really has nothing to do with you and when you can detach like that you can continue to move forward in your own purpose and that that brings me to my next question do you believe that the work that you do every day is aligned with your calling and higher purpose No question. No question, because I also feel that I am doing the work that I am doing is work that I wished I had somebody come along and explain things to me the way that I know I do when I'm speaking with people so that I I feel like I took if you had if you had the map of the of how I got here, it would have <laughs> my starting point, and it would probably have this way back, that way back. There would just be like one of those maps where it's just kind of like you know, like somebody lost in the woods. You know, like those GPS uh, apps that you can have now, where it shows your trail that you ran or jogged or whatever. The one that I would have would look like scribble, like child scribble. And I feel that 
in in doing all of that the way I did it, I I had so many experiences that I I feel like I can now say to somebody, we're gonna remove all of that scribble because I'm realizing now you just had to go here, go to the end, make a right, make a left, boom, you have reached your destination. And you avoid this the scribble that I went through. But I also know that in all that scribbling, I probably there isn't anybody that I've ever sat with and talked with that I haven't had a personal experience that I can relate to with them. Where I feel like when you're talking to somebody and you have a shared experience, especially when it comes to pain, you know, people are more open to hear what you have to say because they're looking at you and you know, and the one thing for me, right? Sometimes when I'm speaking to people and I've had a few people like, like you, I wish I knew this much. And I'm very careful when that gets said to me because what, what I always want to clarify is that we're all on a path. We're all on a journey in our life and it's going to look very different, but there may be people that have spent more time doing something but nothing that I know or where I am and how I got here is not something that you could have. It's attainable to anybody that chooses to question and start on a path. All it means is that we are aligning. Like the reason I'm here with you is you're on a path and you've attracted me to you. So that makes you just as powerful as me. And, and that's what we're doing. I think you and I spoke about this. I call it the bucket analogy, right? So there's, there's people that are just starting on the path. I might be here on the path. And then there's people that I love and look up to that I feel are a little further along. But we're all like, they share it with me, I share it with them, you know, and that's what we're doing. And we're all helping each other, right? It's, it's we're all, as Ram Dass, right? We're all walking each other home. We are all, we are all kind of in communion with one another in, in an effort to better understand ourselves and life. And so I think that is where I, I always want to be mindful that where whatever I have achieved, if somebody looks to it and feels like I have that I am enlightened in a way that seems beyond what they can comprehend I want to remove that right away and just be really clear it, it's a matter of what time are you going to commit to your to your own personal growth what are you going to That's give it. to that and yeah. you will and you will be in a conversation someday where somebody will say that to you so yeah. just just remember to pass that on Yes, there are definitely. no secrets mm -hmm. it is all attainable it's just what are you committing to as far as your personal growth goes. Absolutely. We're here to pass the baton. And when we learn this information, we just, and it's not going to resonate with everyone, but I feel like as we continue to walk on that path of higher purpose and, you know, a higher calling, we're being drawn into people that need what we have. And it's not going to be for everyone. And that's okay. Um, but everybody, it's really important to understand that everybody has a specific, and I say this all the time, that we all have a specific DNA code. We all have a specific blueprint that we are, we are um, on the journey to, to figure out, right? Because before we came onto this planet, before we were birthed through the, our mother's canal, right? We, our, our uh, memory was wiped clean. We knew our soul contract. We signed the soul contract before we came onto this planet. But then when we were born, our memory was wiped clean. And it was really, it's a really important for us to recognize that we're all on a journey to figuring out what that soul contract called for. And so we're going to go down these rabbit holes. We're going to go down these dark paths. We're going to go and we're going to do things that maybe not the best decision, but that is a part of our path. It's a part of our own personal path, which at the end of the day brings us back 
to our soul contract. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it may be like, I know for me, there, there were a few times where I'm like, I, you know, I, I know that, but, but I struggle that I, that I would say, yeah, let me go down and have some of those experiences. But there is a part of me that, that says, but I don't know that it was maybe supposed to be that hard, but maybe life was like, she's not getting it. We have to reinforce this. And unfortunately, this is the only way she's going to get it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's understanding that we, we, we chose to be here for this time to do the work. And it's how quickly do you want to start that work? Right. Yeah. Like how quickly, so that's why everything will always come back to, do you know who you are, right? Like, who am I? Can you answer that question? If you can't, and I'm not talking about the superficial, right? Well, I'm Sharon Radigan and I'm living here in Florida and I have two kids and it's not that. It's like, who are you? And what is your goal for life? And what is your intention? being here when you sit down and really go deep on that inquiry now you at least have a blueprint so that you say okay so if i make this decision can i say that it that it adds in any way or enhances or brings me further along with all of these things that i know to be true and if it's a no then you're like okay then then that's a no and if it's a yes you're like perfect. So you always bring everything back to those core principles you have for yourself. And I just feel that life will be a lot smoother when you do that. And developing the muscle when you are unsure to really get quiet and say, well, what is my intuition telling instead of calling like the five people and telling them the story and then getting what they would do. And now you're like, well, now I'm really confused. So you just pick whoever sounded the most, you know, in line with you, but it's not you. So you're almost better off not doing that. You're almost better off just like if you, create a little space around it and say, all right, I'm not even going to think about this, what this decision has to be. I'm going to give myself, you know, if it has to be done that day, I'm going to give myself an hour to just kind of not think about the answer. And then usually the answer does come to you like in a lightning bolt. You're like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Or like, I'll give myself the day, like whatever, whatever the time frame is, but that's an important thing to, and, and distinctions to make for yourself, which just keeps you on that path of your own evolution. So maybe you don't have to <laughs> go your, maybe your GPS map doesn't have to look like child scribble, you know, yeah. uh, certainly now that's exactly what happens. Everything is, everything is brought back to my blueprint. And then I make all decisions based on all of that and trusting what my intuition is. And there's a lot of things I don't even share with some of the people closest to me when I'm doing something because I need to kind of work through it. Like, no, well, maybe they'll, they're going to watch this. So they'll know, but nobody knew, nobody knows that I'm doing a certification for life coaching. And it's not because it's a secret. It's just that I want to really be here and present with this work. And if people are like, so how is the coaching going? I don't want to talk about it because I feel like it's, it's going to dilute a little thing. And then they're going to say, yeah, but why, if you were already doing feng shui, like, why would you want to be, I don't want to answer any of those questions because it's just like, oh, I'm certified. Oh, what made you do that? It removes a lot of questions. So I can answer them when I'm on the back end of it. And I've, and I've gotten where I, I've gotten to my destination. Yeah. Now I'm happy to talk. And then, so it's, it's like, you know, when you plant a seed and it's coming up and you have to really protect it, right? And you have to wait. So you put sticks by it and you tie something around it because it really needs to be protected. Well, that's, you know, any path that you're on, right? Or a dream or something you're building, you know, treat it like that. And then when it is the mighty oak, you get to say, look at my mighty oak, 
that I've been growing. And oh, well, we had no idea. Yeah, but look at it. It's there. It's done. So that's how I, you know, that's how I treat my life and the choices that I make. I vet everything. I question everything. It's all in alignment. Okay, now I'm going to protect it. And I will share when I feel like it's strong enough and I am really grounded in that role that, I, that I'm okay to go out and talk because people in t- instinctively, even though they love you, they don't understand that sometimes the way they talk and question um, diminish. And I don't want to remove the energy around, around that. You know, anything I choose to do, I, I, I view as sacred and something that I want, I want to really give my full attention to without a lot of the uh, white noise around it. Yes, for sure. It's, it's so important for us to keep the work that we do sacred, especially when we're going through the process of getting this work done. Because you don't want to allow, you know, all the energies, uh, it, it, people's opinions, you know, all these different things to, um, to really come, to come against what it is that you're doing. Because oftentimes people don't understand the vision that you have, and when you're being called to do something bigger, it is really important that you keep it very sacred that you create a space for yourself when where nothing is going to come against what it is that you're doing. And then when the work is out, then you talk about it. Then yeah, you're able to share absolutely. it. Absolutely. Well, it's like you going door to door, you know, during a bright, like if, if you were to say to people that really loved you, well, I'm about to go door to door. If you told them beforehand, and maybe you did, I'm not saying you did it, but like, let's use a scenario where you tell somebody beforehand, and then they all share all the reasons why you shouldn't can, and you shouldn't, but that's not you. That's them. That's how they would be in that scenario. So if you're not really strong and grounded in who you are and, and what your work is, then you could say, you know what, maybe they're right. I really wanted to do that. Okay. I'm kind of bummed, but I'm not going to do it. Oh my gosh. How, like how devastating, how many dreams or unfulfilled lives end that way. Right. Yes. Where they did it. So when you don't, it's okay to not, t- not people don't have to know everything. Like go do it and come back and say, I just knocked door to door and everybody goes, what? But it's already done. It's yeah. already done. And you get to say, no, it was, it's you great. get to share what the reality was, right? Instead of them telling you what all their perceived or maybe their fears for what may happen, you get to come back and say, no, it was fantastic. I really had beautiful conversations with people, you know, every, we were all safe. But we, you know, I got to engage with people and, and it was really powerful and, and it felt great. I'd rather be on that side of the conversation than putting something out there and now allowing any of that energy of um, what they would do. And, and it's not even that it's wrong. It's that's what they would do, but it's not what I would do. And I don't want that kind of, energy coming at me and now I alter some part of how I was going to move forward right because of what they shared with me right it wasn't my decision it was I I submitted to a fear that was not true for me until I put myself in that path absolutely absolutely and it's that's why it's so important to tune into your own voice and that you have people that you can share these things with though that are going to be more understanding of where you are instead of trying to um, steer you away from that path that you're supposed to be on for you. And so um, in order for you to tune into your voice and to stay connected to your creator, what practices do you implement into your life to do that? I have a few. A big one for me is, is being out in nature and I call them my lost days. And a lot of times I, I will always have a notebook with me, right? And I date it. I write where I was. 
and I write whatever comes to mind because I know when I am out in nature, right? They call it the bathing yourself. You are being washed with everything, all of the energies that are that are out there. It's almost like it clears. It's a reset for me. Um, mm -hmm. I go to the beach. I meditate. I I do a journaling where I journal every morning and that helps to reflect things back to me. So if I see I'm writing about something that I really want to do and I notice, okay, you've written about this a few times. So that means you're procrastinating. So re-examine, is it something you really want to do or do you not? But if not, then, then stop writing about it because it just makes you feel bad. But so it helps you to really tune in with where your thoughts are. So you get to empty your brain in the morning by just journaling about whatever's on your mind and you just get it out. And you're not looking for feedback. You, you know, it's perfect. You just get to write, you know, I don't, I, you know, obviously I, I do punctuate, but if somebody wanted to take a journal and that nobody's going to see, then you just free write whatever you want and, and don't worry about periods and, spelling and all of that and just do a brain dump and get it all out on paper um the other thing that that i that i have done a few times is when you're really sitting with something that's on your mind uh you free write about it where it's not like it's a journal entry but you you just kind of know okay i'm gonna write about this for five minutes and what happens is you just go deeper. It's kind of like you and I talking about when you have a conversation. When it's a quick conversation, it's not that there isn't value, but it's with time and the evolution of the conversation that things tend to start to go deeper. So when you do this, like I'm going to write for five minutes on this particular thing, your subconscious and your conscious, everything just drops down into your body. And you'll find yourself writing things that you're just like, I never even saw my mind going in that direction. If it's making a decision about something, if it's what do you feel about something, there's something about the act of sitting and knowing that you are going to write without stopping your pen for, for five minutes, four minutes, you know, start small, say three minutes, right? Because three minutes is a long time when you're writing and you feel yeah. like, I don't know what I'm writing about. But your hands will, your hand will take over and you're, you'll almost be like, I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. That's how profound that act of, of sitting and free writing on a topic and allowing your mind to really sink in and investigate a lot, um, a lot becomes revealed. So that's, that's, those are some of the practices that I have, um, or if my if I feel like my mind is really um, twisting in something, then I know that energetically I am I am in an I am in a moment of imbalance, and so I just I stop. And if it's surrendering to a day where I say, you know what, my mind is not functioning like I'd like it to be, and all of these other practices. They're not resonating. So I know that that I'm not going to meet them with the energy that I need to. So maybe that is the day that you say, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just not even going to try to do anything. Like that is a practice, you know, choosing to not do anything. That is a practice where you're like, okay, I know that I can journal. I can meditate. I have all these things that I could go to that help. But if you already feel like, I don't know that that's what it is today. Maybe it's some, maybe it's just nothing and just allow for that. That's power. That's just as powerful. Yeah, it really is. Stillness, stillness speaks. Yeah. I, uh, I read this, um, this book by Eckhart Tolle, uh, power of now stillness speaks a new earth. Um, and, uh, it's, there's so much power in just being here, not doing anything, not even watching TV not even being on your phone, just literally sitting there and just tuning into what your body is asking you to do. And there's so much power in that, which a lot of people don't. We, we, we live in a society that's very um, 
we have so much noise that is constantly coming at us, right? And it's it takes more power and more discipline to just take yourself away from that and just be silent. Yeah, and 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 sometimes to say, I don't know that I have an answer right now. And that's just as okay as me saying, I, I know what I need, I need to go meditate. It's just as powerful to say, I, I don't know that any of that is really resonating. And really that, you could call that the ego, right? Like the ego mind is, is just, um, it's creating that. And so it's trying to engage you in a conversation of judging yourself for not going and meditating. But that's where you get to say, I don't know, maybe the ego is just a little stronger today. So I don't want to even engage it because that that's going to reflect as me judging myself. And I'm, I don't even want to go there. So that's where I say, you know, like today, I don't know that I have an answer about what I need to do. So I'm not going to try to answer that for myself. And that might be sitting down and picking up a book, or that might be just laying in your bed and staring at your ceiling, like whatever that translates to and let, let the moment wash over instead of attaching a lot of thought and judgment to it. Absolutely. Like I think, I think that's a thing that really impacts or, or gets in the way of a lot of people. It's like the minute they have a bar for themselves and the minute they are not working at that level, there's judgment and criticism. And if you start to leave a little room to say, is, is that even helpful? What does that do for me? Because the answer will always be really nothing. Like you could, you could say the, the reactive and reflective thing of, well, it motivates me and, and it gets me to get back on track. And while that may be true, sometimes if you're, if you're not you could be back on track, but if you're not energetically back on track, then you will, you will go forth to do that thing, not bringing your full self to it. So will it be the quality that you're like, what is the quality of whatever it is that you want to either be as a person or the work that you're doing? So you can, you can force yourself to get back on track, but I don't know, like for me, if, if I, if I know that I'm not energetically there, then I don't know that I'm really, whatever I'm applying myself to, is it really getting the best of me? So if, if, if my intention is to be a certain way and that energetic match isn't there and now I'm not, then, I, then it's a disservice to not only me, but whatever it is, like if I were supposed to go meet somebody for something and I'm not fully there, I'm gonna bring that energy over to them. I don't wanna do that. So that's where, you know, not putting a lot of judgment around a situation. Like the minute you start like doing that and self-criticizing, I think that that is the moment where you realize, well, that none of this is helpful. And, and this is just making probably a situation worse. And if my intention is to show up fully, then I'm really not. And, and that's okay. I'm going to honor that. And I think that's a lot of respect for another person, even though it may not seem like it, right? Like, or the work. It's, a, it's showing a lot more respect to whatever your work is and whoever the people that are that you're engaging with. You know, respecting them, their time, um, and, and whatever work that you may be doing together or that you're doing for them, um, even though they may not even know it, you're doing them more of a service than, than they may realize. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Judgment is, it, it can be one of our greatest enemies. The ego can attack us every second of the day if we allow it to. And that's why it's so important for us to develop these practices because that's what they are. They're, they're everyday practices and it doesn't have to look like anybody else's. Um, you can develop these practices within your own life that are going to be different from mine or from Sharon's. But it's important for you to develop those practices because they just bring you back to self. And that, at the end of the day, is the goal, to bring you back to God, which is your true creation. Um, 
what words of wisdom would you give to those seeking a deeper understanding of themselves? Be kind. <laughs> Be kind when you, when you, whatever work you do to maybe come back to yourself or if you're starting, starting yourself on a path, just be kind to yourself because, you know, that the path can be, it can be a lonely one because it's solitary work. Nobody can do it for you. It is a solo journey. So if you're going to be the only voice being the the cheerleader or the, the, just the, it's part of respecting your own voice, right? Part of respecting your own voice is being kind to yourself because without the kindness, that's when like, when the judgment comes in, people can be pretty vicious with themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, I, there was somebody I was talking to that I, that I know for a long time, not, not somebody I work with and, and they can, they can be so harsh. And, you know, I had this conversation with them one day where it's like, I said, you know, I want to point out, we all know this, right? Would you say the things you're saying about yourself to another person? Would you ever be that mean spirited? And they wouldn't. They knew that, of course not. So why wouldn't you show yourself that same level of love and compassion? And it's like, when it's that bad, it's almost like you're going for your own jugular. There's no growth and there's nothing beautiful that comes from that, right? It's like trying to grow a garden in sand. It's never going to happen. So if you're truly committed to your personal journey, especially when you're starting on one and you start questioning and looking back and really doing an archeological dig of maybe a past that, or, or decisions you made that you regret, be kind and just say, no matter what was, I am, I am committed now to doing better and being more. And the only way that that's going to happen is if I show myself kindness and just examine without judging and just know that, right, we do the best we can with what we have at the time. We make decisions that are the only ones available to us from a mind from the mindset we are in. But when you're in the when you when you're in the intention of growth, always remind yourself of that. Like I am trying to be better. And the only way I'm going to be better is if I am kind to myself as I start walking on this journey. That's the only way that I will continue to move forward. Because with the love and kind, it's like any, you know, if somebody were being really like come on, you can do this. You know, you see it at, at races where people are dragging, but then they have all these people cheering their name and then they're able to, they get a second wind and they, and they run across and now they're, they, there's no difference, but, but now it's just you and you. And so if you are struggling as you, as you're trying to get the momentum to keep going, you know, take those couple of minutes and be like, I am, I can't tell you how many times I have said, I am so proud of you. Like what amazing work you're doing for yourself and all the people in your life that will benefit from you doing what you're doing for yourself. That's powerful, but it's hard to say out loud in the beginning because it almost feels weird, but it, if you imagine saying it, you know, there's a whole thing about, and I've always done this. I have a picture of myself from when I was in elementary school. So, you know, I don't know, second, third grade. 
it was my class picture and I have it on the, on my, on the table that, you know, I get ready and I put my makeup on and I kind of get ready for the day and I keep it there and I do that. And I've had it there for a couple of years because it's always like, no matter what, if I look at her, there's no way I couldn't be kind to her. Right. No way I wouldn't be kind to her and look out for her and, and try to, what can I do to nurture her and make her life better? Because when we look at children, it's all about protection, protecting them and nurturing them. But as we get older, we're, it's no different. We still deserve all of that. So mm -hmm. even if it means you look at a picture of your younger self and, and talk to her or him, you know, do that until it feels more natural. Mm -hmm. but, but be kind. Yes, yes, be kind. The more kind that we are to ourselves, the more compassion and empathy and grace we can extend to those around us. And we need so much more of that, especially in the time that we're living in, because, you know, when we can awaken to the reality that it really is just about coming back to our divine self, the more that we can give so much more positive energy back into the world. And it really just will reflect on the type of life that we continue to live from this day moving forward. We can choose to live, uh, I like to say heaven on earth, or we can choose to live in hell on earth. And it's, you know, we can go back and forth with that duality, right? With that contrast. But at the end of the day, it's a choice. It's a choice on how we perceive ourselves in order for us to be able to perceive something different in the world. This was great, Sharon. Thank you so much for sharing space with me today, for just sharing all your, your wisdom and all the knowledge that you gained up until this point. And I know that it's going to continue to evolve. And I'm so excited to see the work that you continue to do in this world, because we definitely need more of this work. Okay. Do you have any finishing statements that you'd like to add? You know, something that came to me when you were, were speaking was, um, you know, I, I did a talk not long ago on Clubhouse where I made the, made the distinction of um, pleasure seeking and being in a state of joy. And the Reader's Digest version of that, you know, if I, if I try to edit it down to this, is to, you know, when you are living in a state of joy, then you are just happy with things as they are, right? Like you could be happy sitting anywhere taking in nature right like you could sit in the middle of a field and just be there and and you're you're happy you, you're not looking and you don't need anything else if you somebody is a pleasure seeker it's usually they're filling voids of time with things that maybe you go out and shop and I'm not talking about enjoying yourself a day of shopping. I'm talking about a compulsive, repetitive thing that you go to. It could be alcohol. It could be spending too much money. It can be just engaging in activity that while you're doing it, you're, you, you are happy, but it's not sustainable. And then it's usually followed by guilt and judgment. So if you can, if you can say how much of my of what I do in it is based on impulsive reacting to fill a void, then you can say I'm, I'm pleasure seeking. And then you can say, okay, so how, how do I switch to being in a state of joy where I don't feel compelled to go out and do those things because they, they keep me out of alignment. So I guess I just, in ending it, because of the way you said it, it made me think of that. And, and I wanted to just, you know, for anybody that is saying, I want to start on a path, you know, maybe that's one thing to start looking at are what are your behaviors? What are the things that you do um, that are followed by guilt and judgment? And maybe start there 
so that you say, okay, I'm going to just really pay attention to how often I'm really doing that. And, and yeah, I, it is always followed by guilt and judgment. So, so I don't want to do that anymore. So then you find other things that aren't going to be followed by, you know, judgment and guilt and you just get to be present. So if you go and you sit in a field and, you know, or go sit by the water, um, or sit down to read, like these are things that are just a joyful way of being in the world. They bring a lot of pleasure. And then when you're done, you, you know, you don't have guilt. You don't have a credit card bill that you're like, oh my gosh, or you're not waking up with a hangover and you're like, oh my God, the whole next day is killed because of that. And now I'm mad because why did I do that again? So when you remove those things and try to replace them with the things that feel they may not be as exciting. You may not get a rush, but as you, as you go on the path and you remove them, you're going to replace it with things that are going to be part of your growth and evolution that will bring you probably a little faster to where you want to be as a person because you've removed the distractions and the impulsive, um, the impulsive ways that you spend your time. So that yeah. would be the, the last thing I would want to add but I have loved this so much I always you and I can talk for hours <laughs> for hours, and we have and we have but um thank you for for doing this I think the work that you're doing is so valuable and so the more we gather in union doing these types of things um I think that is a huge contribution to the world it's it's huge like the ripple effects of just our conversation now and for anybody watching it in the future it's evergreen it's always going to be out there and i love i love knowing that that we're creating contrast to the negative low vibrating content that's out there yes we create contrast and we create balance absolutely person (laughs) practitioner me loves that we create a little balance here. Yes, absolutely. And I'm, I can't agree with you more. And, um, you know, what you said in your finishing statement, it's so important for us to recognize that we live in a world too, that's filled with instant gratifications. We're constantly being bombarded with all of these things, whether it's diets, you know, clothes, you know, alcohol, all these different things that could easily take down this dark rabbit hole of like just constantly trying to fill a void and change transformational change is not something that happens overnight. When you get on this journey, this journey is, is, is just that it's an, it's a never ending journey up until the time we transition to another dimension and our bodies no longer here on this earth. So I always like to, to recommend or, Uh, encourage people to adopt the 1% shifts, the 1% daily shifts, where if you're, you know, experiencing a a season of your life where you may be, um, you know, uh, struggling with, with addictions, whatever the addiction may be, recognize that this isn't something that you got to overnight. This is this was a this was a journey that brought you to this place where you adopted these addictive uh, habits, right? But it's something that you can undo as well with the one percent shifts every day. And when you adopt that one percent change every day, it, it it's equivalent to three hundred and sixty five percent growth and transformation over the course of the year. And that is where sustainability, that's where you're going to have more sustainability and where you're going to be be able to adopt practices um, that are consistent, that, you know, are going to be long lasting, that they're going to give you the results that you're going to be so much happier with over the course of your life. So thank you so much for sharing that. And again, this is the ripple effect that we are having on the world and every single person that is on this platform and that's going to continue to show up on this platform has something to contribute just like you do. And we are here to encourage you, to uplift you and to inspire you to continue 
continue to walk in your divine purpose because we need so much more of that these days. And the more that you can walk in um, in alignment with your calling your, and your divine purpose, the more we're going to be able to up-level, uplift, and just uh, raise the vibration of our planet. And that's the goal. So thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love, peace, and blessings today and every day moving forward.